Hello, I'm Citrus, and you're looking at something that uh, is not what I'm going to be talking about, but is very closely related to it. And the title of this video is not a question because it's exactly what I'm doing here now, but I guess it's something for you to think about. So if you don't like that kind of stuff, uh, this is, you know, I don't expect a lot of you guys to care about this, but it's just something I want to get off my chest because uh, this has bothered me a little bit. Okay, so we're talking about obviously the Deep Striker, which came out recently in Japan and in a couple of weeks will be everywhere in stores here in America. 2018. All right, so this is the current year that this we're in. 2018. 30 years since Kotoki Hajime first uh, drew any of the artwork for Gundam Sentinel. And 16 years from when this kit came out right here. When I built this kit, I think almost, oh, seven years ago, I enjoyed it immensely. You know, it's, it's a really big, nice kit. And I loved it because it was, it was just so ambitious for what it was at the time. It was this huge, huge model kit that could transform, had countless tiny, tiny pieces that, and the whole thing felt like it would just disintegrate or explode at any minute but you know as you handled it, it actually would manage to stay together and it was pretty solid actually for what it was and I loved it sure it didn't have an it full in a frame or anything but you know what it 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 was a transforming kit that pulled off uh, this two halves transformation thing probably way better than any other kit I can think of off the top of my head especially of the kits that I've built and I loved it and I made it pretty clear when they were announcing the Deep Striker that no, it's not going to be new. But they did also say that they were going to remodel a lot of the kits, that it was going to get a lot of new parts and everything, and that it'll have, I don't exactly remember the verbiage, but it was something along the lines of updated styling to bring it up to modern standards. And uh, I don't really know what that means because it's just marketing speak, and I'm not a marketing kind of person, so I don't exactly understand what what uh, companies mean when they say stuff like that, but basically it's, say, buy this because it's different from something that we made 16 years ago, except, oh, guess what, now that it's actually out and people have started putting all the pictures up of the runners and the parts, it's really not that different. The only things that it really has changed is that the chest on the Deep Striker is full of holes now, and the shoulder bits can slide back and forth, and the head has shrunken, because that's just what we do these days, and excuse my language, but I fucking hate that. It's idiotic, and it's completely stupid. I get what the visual effect is supposed to be, right? You make the head smaller, so that the chest looks bigger, and then when you look at it from a distance, the whole... The whole finished kit looks taller, lankier, and basically looks more athletic, stronger, or whatever you have it, right? And that's fine and all. But Bandai, when they were doing that, they clearly forgot that they made three other versions of this exact same kit that have the old large head, and that if you were to display any of these four kits together, it would be really, really obvious that one of them is off. Right? And clearly they had... I don't know what, what, what the plan was. I, in my opinion, I think the Deep Striker was part of a plan that somebody in Bandai R&D had. Right? Uh, maybe maybe he, was, he was probably the only guy working on this on his own. So it took him forever. But he, he was like, you know what? I'm going to be the one guy that's going to make the 2.0 S Gundam. Right? I'm going to make the 2.0 S Gundam, and it's going to be fantastic, and it's going to be great, and we're going to charge 10,000 yen for it, and everyone's going to pay out of the nose, but they're going to love it because it's going to be a 2.0 S Gundam. Maybe even could have put a Verka badge on it. It would have been amazing. But Bandai rolled around to 200 Master Grades, right? And they probably could have been slowing down Master Grade releases for the last five years because they saw this coming. But... They came up to 200, and they realized that they didn't have any real serious projects left on the cards because they already made the Verka Double Zeta, and now they're at 200, and they're like, oh my god, what special thing can we possibly do? 
So they take this one guy's little pet project that he's only a quarter of the way through, clearly, and they said, okay, you know what? You get to take this project, don't finish it, slap all this old shit on it that we have from the S Gundam booster type, and just make some random other crap, put it on top, and then we're going to sell it for 20,000 yen, okay? The most expensive regular release Master Grade ever made, and then we're going to make that number 200 to please a bunch of old farts who have been waiting for this kit for 30 years. And because he's just one guy working on this kit, he didn't have any say in it, so this crappy subpar thing came out. So Da Long summed it up pretty well in his review. He, he said that because the whole thing is so immobile and that, you know, the, the level of fine detail was just absent, putting the whole kit together was more like building Lego than it was like building a Gundam kit. And then me having gone through the manuals and all the parts, it really does look that way. And that really disappoints me. Because the 2002 kit that you see in front of you here. This is great because it was from 2002. It was the best they could do with for this design with what they had. And that's enviable. But the Deep Striker is just the most obviously lazy thing that could have possibly happened. And they charge 20,000 yen for it. And you don't even get all the S Gundam parts. You don't get any leftover le you, you get leftovers to build literally nothing. You can't even build any of the core boost uh, core fighters that came with this. This came with one core fighter and a core block, right? But the new one doesn't have anything. It doesn't it, it has just nothing. It has like a bunch of leftover outside red bits that you put on it and the cowlings but no wings, no canopies, no cockpits, nothing. You just get a pile of leftover crap that you can't do anything with and you put it together and all you get is a brick, like a literal brick, right? Because it has maybe a total of what? Six moving joints. You have one arm, right? Which is one elbow and one wrist. So that's two joints. And you have two shoulders. So that's four. You have a neck. That's five. The gun can move up and down a little tiny bit if you want to count that six, okay? And then if you want to count the three joints that are in the arm that lets it move around, slide back and forth, okay, fine, you get you get nine nine joints. Sure, if you add up the boosters or whatever, you, you get into, like, double-digit territory. But what I'm, what I'm saying is you get nine joints, which is okay, that's fine. But then mechanical details, right? There has to be maybe there's some sort of gimmick or anything. Nope. Cannons don't do anything. Everything just sort of plugs together really big and dumb blocky-like. And just nothing. You, you pay 20,000 yen on top of this kit, okay? Which, which transforms and can stand up on its own. You pay 14,000 yen extra for a bunch of extra parts that make this kit in front of you here worse in just about every single measurable way just so that it can be bigger and have a tube on it which you can probably make by just gluing a bunch of straws together i i don't want i don't know if i if it's correct to say it this way but like it took the worst elements of this kit right which is that it's old and you know not not exactly the best engineering and they put it together with all the worst elements of new kits which is no intricacy, no mechanical detail, and, and just completely idiotic proportions. And, and they just mush it together into this overpriced box of crap. So that's it. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get a lot of backlash for this video because, you know, I'm talking about something I haven't owned, something that, and especially something that I don't plan on owning. Uh, and, uh, all of that, everything that I've said is basically pretty negative. And, uh, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people will get offended because they think that I'm going to, I'm attacking a decision that they've made for themselves. Like, oh, you know, you're talking badly about this kit that I bought, that I spent a lot of money on, and you're making me feel bad about making the decision and spending the money that I did. But the thing is, you can like the Deep Striker. And that's totally okay. And and you could have bought it, and it is a legit decision, all right? It's not 
It's not like me saying anything bad about it makes your decision worse. I'm just saying that in the grand scheme of kits that Bandai has made, especially with the expertise and time that they could have had to develop something like this, they could have done a much better job and spent or, and created a product that was much better value than what it actually is, right? It doesn't change the fact that we now have, for the first time, pretty sure, a 1-100 representation of the Deep Striker. And from like 10 feet away, it doesn't look bad. So feel free to thumbs down this video, unsubscribe, do whatever you want. This is just my opinion, and I f feel like, I don't know, this it's just this kit upset me a lot. And uh, I want to put this out there so that nobody buys this kit, not knowing what it is going in and then ends up being extremely disappointed because they're putting it together and they read the runners and it says 2002 on half of them instead of 2018. It's better for you to hear this kind of stuff from someone who has some idea of what's going on uh, and be disappointed that what you wanted to do may not be as good of an idea as you thought it was than to go ahead and do that thing that you wanted to do and then realize that it was a mistake after you've already committed all your time and energy into it. I am bitching, I'll admit, but you know what? I feel like this is something that needs to be said, and now that I've said it, I feel much better. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.